Good evening from New York. The leader of the U.S. Senate has now joined the leader of the House of Representatives in saying yes, Congress will create not-for-profit government-run health insurance, giving Americans an alternative to the soaring premiums and the soaring profits of the giant insurance cartel. Our number five story tonight, the public option lives, with the caveat that Majority Leader Reid said states would have the chance to opt out, a chance to do so until 2014, even though the public option wouldn't go into effect until 2013. Some confusion about what that meant. The White House not confused at all this afternoon, releasing a statement saying the president is, quote, pleased that the Senate has decided to include a public option for health coverage. Republicans responding as well. House Republican leader Boehner saying any version of the public option is a path to, quote, government-run health care. Boehner offering no alternatives. But it is not just any version of the public option that Mr. Reid is bringing to the floor. The senator saying President Obama and the chairman of the two committees which wrote health care bills agreed to make the public option option. As we've gone through this process, I've concluded with the support of the White House, Senators Dodd and Baucus, that the best way to move forward is to include a public option with the opt-out provision for states. Countdown has learned Mr. Reid sent several iterations of the public option today to the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, which is now scoring them, estimating the cost for various ways of, for instance, letting states opt out, whether they could opt out until 2014, as Mr. Reid said, or some other date, whether state legislators or just governors would be able to pull their entire state out of the public option. Countdown tonight also getting some clarity on what Reid meant when he said nonprofit co-ops not run by the federal government are also in his bill. Co-ops being another option for health consumers who cannot get coverage through their employers, as well as one way for states to go if they opt out of the public option. The Maine Senator, Olympia Snow, the Republican seen as Democrats' best hope for a nominally bipartisan bill, has consistently pushed back against even an opt-out public option. Reid was asked about her today and said, in essence, see ya. I spoke to Olympia on Friday. Um, I've talked to her on a number of occasions. And uh, at this stage, she does not like a public option of any kind. And so we'll have to move forward on this. And there will come a time, I hope, where she sees uh, the wisdom of supporting a health care bill after having had the opportunity to her and others to offer amendments. Mr. Reid has more than 50 Democrats behind the public option, but to pass it, he needs 60 senators who agree on holding an up or down vote. That means every single Democrat. This weekend, the Democrat Ben Nelson of Nebraska told Politico he must see the bill first before he can decide whether to help Republicans block Democrats from voting on it. Today's spokesman for Democrat Blanche Lincoln of Arkansas told the Plum Line blog she will also have to wait. Mr. Reid today predicting they will fall in line when the bill hits the floor. As soon as we get the bill back from CBO and people have a chance to look at it, which we'll have ample time to do that, I believe we clearly will have the support of my caucus to move to this bill and start legislating. Time now to bring in one of the primary advocates of the state opt-out compromise, the Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer of New York. Great, thanks for being with us tonight, sir. Hey, good evening. How do you know, how are you sure that Blanche Lincoln and Ben Nelson will let Democrats have the up or down vote uh, on the public option? Well, the reason I think there's a lot of uh, confidence in our caucus is Harry Reid. He's the best vote counter there is. He spent a lot of time with each of them, and uh, I wouldn't bet against Harry Reid. He was not going to, you know, our primary goal here is to pass a good, strong health care bill. We, many of us, feel strongly that a public option should be in the bill, and Leader Reid is able to weave the desires of the caucus into a sort of finished product, and uh, so... Uh, again, don't bet against them. Senator Schumer, uh, Senator Dodd said tonight that this is his committee's version of the public option that has been presented. How accurate is that to your knowledge? Well, it is. Uh, the level playing field public option is something uh, that the Health Committee backed. I had proposed it um, early on as a way to bring moderates around and not have the Medicare uh, set the rates. And the Health Committee uh, thought along exactly the same lines. Uh, the proposal that I made, the proposal that the Health Committee made were very similar. So Senator Dodd's correct. Senator, if the, if the public option uh, is uh, enacted and it is still closed, to people who get their coverage through work. How will that exert competitive pressure on the insurance companies who sell company plans? 
Well, if the public option works as we think it will, it's going to be different. It's going to have to play by the same rules as the insurance companies, same reserves and same requirements and same uh, kinds of regulations. But first, it's not going to have to make a profit. That's 10 to 20 percent off the top. Second, it doesn't have to merchandise. It doesn't have to go out and try and sell. And third, it's going to have sort of a different view. The in private insurance company is supposed to maximize profit for their shareholders. That's what capital is, whereas the public option is supposed to serve its members. And so they're not going to be scrambling for ways, if you have cancer, to figure out a way, well, maybe we can say that it was not covered by our insurance policy as private insurance would. So it's going to be a competitor on a level playing field, but with different values. And we'll have to see who likes what best. We think a public option will do two things. First, it'll give a home to people who don't like private insurance, who private insurance won't treat well. But Second, even if you want to keep your private insurance, it's good for you because it will create pressure on those companies, pricing pressure downward and uh, delivering services in a better way. To that point, do you know, Senator, what Mr. Reid meant uh, when he talked about states possibly opting out by 2014? Was he talking about giving them a one-year window before they had to opt out? We weren't clear. Yeah, I know what Senator Reid is intending, but um, because um, he has sent it over to CBO mm -hmm. and as a private matter, and you don't want to make uh, the CBO score public yet, although we will certainly have it balanced, um, uh, it's wise not to talk about the specific details. All right, well, let me ask and you. Senator Reid asked me not to, and I'm okay. going to uh, uh, obey that. A question about uh, another date. Politico reported that there's several Democrats who are pushing to move up some of the more tangible benefits of this process to start next year. Is that plausible? Will they succeed? It is plausible. Um, you know, I think that once we pass health care, good, comprehensive, strong health care, it's going to be very popular with the American people. And uh, there are some who say, let's bring some of those tangible benefits immediately to people. And that's a good idea, but obviously it'll have to be done in, within the constraints of keeping this balance. The president has promised, and we in the Democratic caucus, liberals and conservatives alike, are going to stick with the promise that this will not increase the deficit. Last question, Senator. Give me an assessment of where, where this date ranks uh, among the dates of uh, the <laughs> process of getting health care reform in this country. Is it time for congratulations, or is this just no, a plateau no. on a mountainside? Well, it's in between. It's a great day. It's a giant step forward, but it ain't over till the fat lady sings, and this has been a very, very tough thing to do. It's, I give the president credit um, in this sense. Uh, this is one of the hardest things I've mm -hmm. ever seen uh, to be accomplished because we've seen it fail so many times before. He stuck with it. We're sticking with it. The House is sticking with it. And I would bet we're going to get this done. But there'll probably be some twists in the roads that you and I don't anticipate uh, because that's how this has been from the get-go. Well, to the degree that congratulations are order, whatever they're right. in order, my congratulations to you, Senator Schumer of New York, and thanks for your Thank time you. tonight. Thank you. Nice